tea in reference to food, rather than the drink, has long been used as an umbrella term for several different meals. Isabella Beaton, whose books on home economics were widely read in the 19th century, describes afternoon teas of various kinds, and provides menus for the old-fashioned tea, the at-home tea, the family tea and the high tea. Tea time is the time at which the tea meal is usually eaten, which is late afternoon to early evening, being the equivalent of merienda. Tea as a meal is associated with Russia, Great Britain, Ireland and some Commonwealth countries. Afternoon tea Afternoon tea is a light meal typically eaten between 3.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. Observance of the custom originated amongst the wealthy social classes in England in the 1840s. Her Grace Anna Maria, Duchess of Bedford, is widely credited as transforming afternoon tea in England into a late afternoon meal whilst visiting Belvoir Castle in Leicestershire. By the end of the 19th century, afternoon tea developed to its current form and was observed by both the upper and middle classes. It had become ubiquitous, even in the isolated village in the fictionalized memoir Lark Rise to Candleford, where a cottager lays out what she calls a visitor's tea for their landlady. The table was laid, there were the best tea things with a fat pink rose on the side of each cup, hearts of lettuce, thin bread and butter, and the crisp little cakes that had been baked in readiness that morning. For the more privileged, afternoon tea was accompanied by delicate savories, customarily cucumber sandwiches or egg and cress sandwiches, bread and butter, possibly scones, with clotted cream and jam, as for cream tea, and usually cakes and pastries, such as Battenberg cake or Victoria sponge. The sandwiches usually have the crusts removed, and are cut into small segments, either as triangles or fingers, also known as tea sandwiches. Biscuits are not usually served. Nowadays, a formal afternoon tea is more of a special occasion, taken as a treat in a hotel. The food is often served on a tiered stand, there may be no sandwiches, but bread or scones with butter or margarine and optional jam or other spread, or toast, muffins or crumpets. Afternoon tea as a treat may be supplemented with a glass of champagne or a similar alcoholic drink. A less formal establishment is known as a tea house or tea room, similar to a coffee house. These used to be common in the UK, but these establishments have declined in popularity since the Second World War. ABC Tea Shops and Lion's Corner Houses were successful chains of such establishments, and played a role in opening up possibilities for Victorian women. A list of significant tea houses in Britain gives more examples. The custom of taking afternoon tea with bread or pastry was also common in some continental European areas long before the emergence of the practice in England, though such customs are not widely known in English-speaking countries. For example, Alexander Balthazar Laurent Grimaud de la Rainière wrote in 1804 of afternoon tea in Switzerland. Beurs les cinq heures du soir, la maîtresse de la maison fait elle mine, au milieu du salon, du thé très fort, quadu se sent à peine quelques gouttes d'une crème anxieuse, de largest tartines de pan boré l'accompaniment. Tel est le thé suisse dans tout sa simplicité. Mais, dans la plupart des maisons opulence, on y ajoute du café, des pâtisseries légères de tout espèce, et don't plusieurs cent mime inconnus à Paris, des fruits confis aux glaces, des macarons, des biscuits, du nougat, et mime jusqu'à des glaces. Towards five o'clock in the evening, the mistress of the house, in the midst of the sitting room, makes tea herself, very strong and barely sweetened with a few drops of rich cream, generous slices of buttered bread accompany it. Such is the Swiss tea in all its simplicity. In most opulent houses, however, coffee and light pastries of all kinds are added, many of which are unknown in Paris, preserved or candied fruits, macaroons, biscuits, nougat, and even ice cream. A tea party is a social gathering around this meal, not to be confused with the Boston Tea Party, a mid-December 1773 incident at the beginning of the American Revolution, or the 21st century political movement named after it. Cream Tea This snack is associated with the West Country, i.e. Cornwall, Devon, Dorset and Somerset. It usually consists of scones, clotted cream, strawberry jam, plus, of course, tea to drink. Some venues will provide butter instead of clotted cream. In Australia, this is commonly referred to as Devonshire tea. 
Tea is the evening meal. Tea is a name for the evening meal, usually associated with the working class and is typically eaten between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. In most of the United Kingdom, namely north of England, North and South Wales, the English Midlands, Scotland, and in some rural and working class areas of and in Northern Ireland, people in these areas traditionally call their midday meal dinner and their evening meal tea, served around 6 p.m., whereas the upper social classes would call the midday meal lunch or luncheon and the evening meal, served after 7 p.m., dinner, if formal, or supper, if informal. This differentiation in usage is one of the classic social markers of English, CU and non-U English. However, in most of the south of England, the midday meal is almost universally called lunch, with dinner being the evening meal, regardless of social class. High tea typically consists of a hot dish, followed by cakes and bread, butter and jam. Occasionally there will be cold cuts of meat, such as ham salad. The term was first used around 1825, and high tea is taken on a high dining table, by contrast, low tea, which was more of a light snack, was served on a low table, what would be called a coffee table in North America, a stereotypical expression, you'll have had your tea, is used to parody people from Edinburgh as being rather shortcoming with hospitality. A BBC Radio 4 comedy series of this name was made by Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. Tea break Not a meal as such, but a chance to down tools or get away from the computer and relax from work for 10 to 15 minutes. This may occur mid-morning or mid-afternoon. It may equally involve coffee, and almost inevitably, biscuits. Once upon a time, the drinks were served by the workplace's tea lady, a position that is now almost defunct. The British and Irish habit of dunking biscuits in tea has been exported around the globe. Australian and New Zealand usages of the term In Australia and New Zealand, any short break for tea in the afternoon is referred to as afternoon tea. As a result, the term high tea is used to describe the more formal affair that the English would call afternoon tea. In Australia, the evening meal is still often called tea whereas the midday meal is now commonly called lunch. In rural areas, dinner is still used quite often for the midday meal, tea is at around 6 p.m., and supper is either a very late meal at night, or food served at night at a social function, such as the town's annual Christmas dance and supper. In both countries, smoko can be used as a synonym for tea break, especially for people in manual jobs. See also Merienda, the Hispanic analog Tea dance Tea set, the tea pot, sugar bowl, milk jug, etc. Tea in the United Kingdom Tiffin References External links Weekly Times, High Times for High Tea. 2013 It's Love in the Afternoon as Australians Lap Up. High Tea, 2013 SBS Food Story on High Tea, 2010 Teas and Other Afternoon Parties. Chapter 13 of Emily Post's Etiquette, 1922 Wikibooks Cookbook History of the afternoon tea tradition from China